Hey guys, it's Jay here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee and we're going to be taking a look at and I'm going to show you how to install the Kurt 4-Pole Trailer Wiring Harness. Adding a 4-Pole to your Jeep is going to allow you to do a few things. Uh, first and foremost, it's going to allow you to give the proper signals from your vehicle to your trailer so that others behind you know that you're safe and legal and they know what your intentions are. So if you want to make a light right turn or, or turn into a parking lot, um, they're going to know that because your vehicle is sending the signals to the trailer lights. Um, another thing, which is more common now, is that there's accessories that are coming with accessory lights on them, like a cargo carrier or some bike racks even have lights. Um, certain states require you to have accessory brake lights or auxiliary brake lights on the back of your accessories if you cover up the license plate. So having a four pole on here is gonna help you to allow, allow you to be safe and legal in any of those scenarios. Now what's really nice about this kit is it's custom fit to fit this vehicle. So um, the connections that you'll have to make are gonna be behind the taillights. Uh, this is not a very involved kit to get installed. You'll have to remove your taillights, make a few connections, and then you'll run your wiring down and out the bottom and there's going to be a control box which is designed to keep your vehicle's lights from feeding back to your trailer and vice versa, your trailer to your vehicle. Um, more common than not, it's the trailer that you want to stop sending feedback to the vehicle um, so that your vehicle's lights are protected and your trailer's lights are protected. Uh, probably the hardest thing to get installed on this kit is going to be running the uh, main power wire from that converter box up to the battery under the hood of the vehicle. That's, to me, that's the most difficult. Uh, we use lifts to install it, so it's a little bit easier because you can see it. Um, but laying underneath the vehicle, we're going to show you a great route to run it. And it's right along the edge of the car, so you don't have to lay under it. You just have to uh, be able to get underneath a little bit to run that wire up into the engine bay and connect it to the battery. The system is also going to be fused, so if there's ever a power surge or a low power, draw, um, that fuse will pop and protect your whole system. Now one thing I would recommend if you decide to go with four pole wiring harness, um, I would recommend getting either a hitch that has a bracket pre-mounted on it for four pole wiring um, or getting a separate bracket for it because um, you can see here we do just have it hooked onto the safety chain loop which is not a big deal um, but the bracket it's a no drill bracket it'll bolt right to the top or clamp to the top of the receiver um, the cross tube and uh, it'll allow you to put your four pole on it and it'll look just like factory um, this particular owner of this vehicle didn't plan on using his four pole all that often so um, he didn't really care so much about the bracket but from my standpoint i, I just i recommend it because i always want my vehicle to look as factory as possible um, but with all that being said, let's go ahead and pull the car into our shop and show you how we did it. To begin our installation, we'll start by removing our taillights. We'll need to pop these little push pins, we'll pop the center out, and then slide the, you can do this with a flathead screwdriver or with a trim panel tool. Pop the center out, and then you want to pop the base out. Now when you use a trim panel tool, the nice thing about it is it's not all pressure from one area like on a screwdriver. A trim panel tool will allow you to pry the whole base out with even pressure, like so. We'll repeat that same process on the other side of the vehicle. Now we can take our tail light and pull rearward in order to pop it out. What we did was we just took a trim panel tool, snuck it in behind the light to help us pull straight out. But these will pull straight out of these two uh, holders here. And we'll take our, all these tabs off the back and pull our wiring off. Now what we'll need to do with our taillights removed, 
We took a fish wire, we're just using a piece of scrap airline tubing we have. You can also use a string or uh, an excess piece of wire that you might have. Take a, a nut, tie it off to the string, drop it down through. And essentially what we need to do is pull this harness up. We need to pull the yellow wire. The other side is gonna have a big green wire on it. And then we'll find a place underneath behind this fascia to mount up our converter box. But we're gonna take the smallest plug out of the four because we're gonna to have to pull it up through a pretty small gap. And I'll just try to pull each plug one at a time. We'll take some electrical tape and tie this off. Now we can pull this harness up through. Again, some of these wires are gonna be pretty big. Um, so you have to pull them up one at a time. Now we can take our harness and match up the plugs. And this plug here is not going to get a matching plug because we're only going to need the functions from our turn and from our taillights. Now we'll take the self-tapping screw that comes in your kit and get our ground in place. Now with the rest of our wiring underneath our vehicle, uh, we're going to have to find a spot to mount our converter box, but first we ran our green wire across, we zip tied it to a little hole in the body right here, ran it across, zip tied it to some factory wiring, then came over and then dropped down a uh, fish wire, which again we used our airline tubing, and now it's ready to be pulled up through this cavity in the passenger side tail light. Uh, but what we're gonna do first before we go up there is we're going to attach our black wire, which is gonna be our power wire. We'll have to run that up to the battery and get our converter box stuck to the side of our vehicle. Now you can pick whichever place you want to mount this. Um, I took the double-sided sticky tape and um, I found a really good place right on the back of this. It's right above here. Um, is a good flat place to mount this up. You just want to clean it off and then stick it to the side of the vehicle. And then that way, when our four pull is ready to be run, it's right here. And all we have to do is attach the excess to the top of our hitch and run our four pull out. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, we've attached our butt connector to our black wire coming from our converter box. And what we need to do is we need to take this and run it up to the battery of our vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you the route that I took to get it there. Now before we show you the 12 volt route, uh, we'll, we pulled our green wire up into the passenger tail light and we can make our connections. I'll take the, we already zip tied them together, just want to make sure that you're connecting um, the new harness to our old factory harness on the Passenger side, you're only going to have uh, the one connection, and then these are going to be your three that will go back to your taillight. Now, the way that we ran our power wire, um, I'm going to use my laser pointer to help point it out because we have lots of other wires and stuff. But we took our power wire, ran it along, zip tied it to factory wiring here, and followed all our factory wiring down. Zip tied it to the cross member here, ran it up and over top of our frame rail right in this area. Then we came up here, again, following existing wiring, zip tied it, and then came across behind this bracket right here, followed along, and then went all the way along our frame. And then actually right here, there's these convenient little tabs on the side of our um, wire loom here. There's a plastic guard over it. Um, there's these little tabs and we just zip tied our wire to the tabs all the way up to where we ran our airline tubing down through a grommet in under the hood and the your airline tubing or your fish fire which, whichever uh, method you decide to go with will come down right behind this wheel well and then we ran our power wire up into the engine bay. 
Uh, we've got our power wire pulled up into our engine bay. Uh, we've got a connection here we can attach to or you can connect to the power wire that's uh, attached to our fuse block. Whichever you want, we're just gonna do it here uh, because it's easier. We'll take our black wire. We did cut some of the length off. We'll strip that back. And then what we need to do is we'll put a little bit of a twist on it. I have to cut some of this off. We'll take our fuse holder, which will take a ring terminal that comes in your kit, crimp it on, heat shrink butt connector. We like to add these when it's outside underneath the hood. Take that. Slide it over the end, and then crimp it down. We'll take a 13 millimeter socket, remove this accessory post, and take our ring terminal without the fuse in the holder, slide it over, and then put the elongated nut back on. All that's left to do is stick in our fuse holder and put our tail lights back in and test out our system. And we'll take our connectors, replace the bottom one, plug in our new connector. Don't forget these red tabs on them, those are what locks them in place. And this yellow one's going to be a little bit shorter than our factory one was. That's all right. We'll have enough space to get our housing back in place. Now, what we learned on the, the passenger side of the vehicle is that this plug almost has to hang out right behind these other plugs when we're putting it back in place. And when putting this light back in, we found that you almost have to put these two larger plugs um, like in and behind the housing itself. Slide it back in. Gotta make sure it seats well. There we go. Now we can get our pushpin passengers back in. How to test out our lighting functions. How to test out our wiring. We can go through our basic functions. We'll have our left turn, right turn, brake lights, and our running lights. Now that we know that everything's working properly, that's gonna do it for installation of the four pole kit. Well guys, hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not the Kurt four pole wiring harness is right for your 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee.